Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus will save. What's the next one, B? Um, three nine. 439, I'm sorry. 439. 439. Oh, this is an all-time thing. Yes. Meet your phone, your phones and sing along. Sing along with us. Come on. Enjoy song service. How far from home my ashes on. I bent my steps. The watchman spake, the long dark night is almost gone, the morning soon will break. Then weep no more, but speed thy flight with hope's bright star for guiding ray, till thou shalt reach the realms of light in everlasting days. I ask the warrior on the field, this was his soul, inspiring song, with courage bold, the sword of wheel, the battle is not long. Then weep no more, but well endure the conflict till the work is done. For this we know the prize is sure when victory is won. I ask again, earth, sea, and sun, seemed with one voice to make reply. Time's wasting sands are nearly run. Eternity is nigh. Then weep no more with warning tones. Portentous signs are making round. The whole creation waiting grounds to hear the trumpet sound. Not far from home, O oh blessed thought, the traveler's lonely heart to cheer, which oft a healing bath has poured and dried the mourner's tears. Then weep no more, since we shall meet where weary footsteps never roam. Or trials pass, or joys complete, save in our Father's home. Amen. What a time that will be. What Amen. a rejoicing when there will be no more weeping, no more tears, safe in our Father's arms. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We'll move right into our opening song. And that will be number 578, 578, another old time favorite. So send a you. By grace made strong to triumph, or hosts of hell, or darkness that pens him, my name to bear, and in that name to conquer. So send I you, my victory to win. So send I you to take to souls in bondage the word of truth that sets the captive free to break the bonds of sin to lose respecters. So send I you to bring the lost to me. So send I you, 
My strength to know in weakness, my joy in grief, my perfect peace in pain. To prove my power, my grace, my promise, presence, so send I you eternal fruit to gain. So send I you to bear my cross with patience, and then one day with joy to lay it down, to hear my voice, well done my faithful servant, come share my throne, my kingdom and my Okay, now we'll have our opening prayer coming up by Sister Claudia. She will lead us into our opening prayer. Let us bow our heads reverently as we seek the Lord in prayer, after which we will have our scripture reading. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Eternal and our most mighty Father and God, of the universe. We come before you today, God, a new day that you have awakened us to see. Thank you, Lord, that you have led us in the past and you will forever lead us. Thank you, Father, that you have forgiven our sins, dear God, so that we can have hope for salvation. Thank you, Lord, that this your Sabbath Day, you're in our presence, you're in our midst, dear God. So help us, Lord, as we bow down and worship you and delve into your words, that you will inspire us, dear God. Be with all the speakers today that will lead out, Lord, inspire them and bring to their lips what you want us to hear, dear God. Be with them, give them confidence and your peace. Be with all of us as we bond together in one accord. This and more we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading will be taken from Judges 6, and I will read verses 11 to 16. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophra that pertained unto Joseph the Abyssalite and his son Gideon fresh head wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, the mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us unto the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save thee? Sorry. Wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house. Verse 16 and last. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Amen. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Happy Sabbath. Amen. 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 So as we have listened to the scripture reading, and we have also heard the songs. This morning, I'm focusing on the title, Ordinary People. Ordinary People. 
So Gideon, I would say, was an ordinary person because he was a farmer. I guess in today's society, we probably see farmers as ordinary people because they have no diplomas, they have no degrees. But yet, I'm sure many of us would say, and I would say too, that they are extraordinary people. I would say Gideon was also a very timid person. He heard about the many miracles of God and what he had done for his people, but he, he had not seen any. It had been many years since the miracle of the 10 plagues and the, the, the parting of the Red Sea and um, the Jordan River. So Gideon basically had given up because he didn't see any miracles happening. Are you feeling discouraged today because you're still waiting on your miracle? Don't give up. Hold on. God is saying your miracle is on its way. It's going to happen right on time. Gideon wrongly assumed that God had given his people, that God had given up on his people rather, but it was the people who had actually given up on God. Though God had promised Gideon he would be with him and he would give him all the strength, he would have given him all the strength he needed to overcome the opposition. He felt he was just an ordinary man and that had limitations. But brothers and sisters, those of you who are listening to my voice this morning, let us not remind God of our limitations because he knows all about us and has not made any mistake evaluating our character. Gideon's obedience to God calls, brought, it brought victory to Israel and it, he's listed as one of the greatest heroes of faith. So from Gideon, talking about his limitations, then being obedient to God. God made him extraordinary that he could be on that great list, heroes of faith. Thank God for that. Today, God is still calling ordinary people to do extraordinary work, assuring us that he will be with us. Because we are ordinary people being used by God, it's evident that Power comes from God and not from us. I remind you today of the global call, who will go? People all over the world are responding, I will go. Throg's Net Mission is responding, I will go. Will everyone today listening, watching on any platform, heed the call and say, I will go. There's work to be done. The time is short and the coming of the Lord is soon. Just say in your hearts with me now, Lord, I am just an ordinary person, but you are all powerful God. I want to serve you. Please show me how and give me the strength. And then you can say, Lord, I'm available to you. I'm available to you. To you. Amen. 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 Amen, Dora. Hi, we're having some technical difficulties. Um, we're going to go straight into our children's Sabbath school, and Afina will be doing our lesson study. Sit up a little more, Afina. We can't see your face too clearly. Sit up on a pillow or something, a little higher. <laughs> Just record. Put a second pillow. 
Oh, thanks to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We're just thankful that God has been good to us. He has blessed us with another week of life. And when we gather together in the house of the Lord, there is always a blessing. Amen. So I want everyone to expect an encounter with the Lord as we gather in his word. Hey, Athena, you look amazing as always. Happy Sabbath, young one. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Athena. Happy Sabbath. Good morning, Athena. Good morning, Miss Heisen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Today's Sabbath school number is lesson number two. And the topic says leaving water. And the memory verse says. Whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. John 4, verse 14. The message says, Jesus is everyone's friend. Have a happy Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Happy Sabbath. Jesus is everyone's friend. Thank you for the reminder. I hope we've all studied. Yay. As Happy always. Sabbath. Oh, Happy man. Sabbath. And then again, just a reminder, this is Sabbath school, which means that we all participate. This is a time when you can unmute your mics and participate. It is not a lecture. It is called <laughs> sharing. Okay. Now, as always, we go into our um before going into our Sabbath school lesson, we like to offer folks the, the opportunity to just share your week. It could be a week of, I had such a terrible week, pray for me. It could be a week of, I had all hallelujahs, shout with me, whatever it was, we're here to celebrate or to and or encourage. So who would like to start? Don't um, start. It month. is. Okay. Um, it is awesome to belong to the family of God and to know God as your personal savior. But if we don't study, if we don't read, we don't pray, we become stagnant and forget all the things we are supposed to be doing. So this week, <clears throat> as I read Mrs. White's writings on prayer, um, and private prayer. And you listen to what, what was being said, I recognized how far I was from the mark of private prayer. You praying and not recognize. And I said, no, 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 got to do this better. And it's amazing the goodness, the, uh, the blessing that comes your way, you're just smiling and all you want to do is to continue praying. Amen. And that's what I did. And it's Amen. a blessing. Thanks for sharing, Hyacinth. Anyone else? I think I can piggyback off of what Hyacinth is saying because um, over the past couple of weeks, my view on private prayer has been um, challenged and it's just an area that I'm going in, so I just thank God for that. As far as my week, it has been pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good this morning because somebody mistakes me for a high school student. <laughs> and I'm definitely mid 30. So that made me feel kind of good today. So that was a nice little end to the week. Amen. <laughs> I mean, you know, the little things that make us smile, right? That showed you put a smile on my face as well. So. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Anyone else would like to share? All right. If not, let's go into prayer as we start our Sabbath school lesson. Father, today we just want to give ourselves over to you. We ask that you just fill us with your Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit speak through us and to us as we share what we have gleaned from this week's lesson and from this quarter about crucibles. Lord, may it help us to bring about an awareness in our lives that 
um, being a Christian is not just smooth climbing, that we have trials in our lives and we have temptations and we have all the things that you permit to come to us mm -hmm. to make us into those people or the people that you want us to be. So Father, strengthen us now. Purify our thoughts and our minds. Uplift us to the place where we can connect with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So this week's lesson, the crucibles that come. Now, what came to mind when you read this topic, the crucibles that come? Um, may I say? Sure. I see that my life is a crucible. Mm. 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 Wow, right to the point, I said. To the point. Way to go. To the point. That's called identifying. You know? There we go. And, um, Sometimes you find yourself smooth sailing, and then one day out of the blue, here comes this crucible, and you don't know what to do with it, and the only thing you can do with it is fall on your knees. In the previous lesson, the, 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 the introduction to Sabbath evening, mm -hmm. It was the young lady, whatever had happened to her. And so, until she slid um, down on the floor and reached over and got her Bible and started to read, was she able to find something in what was going on with her? So the crucible, we're not going to run away from it. It's good, but it's also bad. Should I say that? That's okay. It, it's it's, 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 how, it's you want, how you feel like it is, and you're describing it. Listen, because um, at my age now, I speak truth. I don't hide anything and tell. And one um, mayor had said at my at his age, he, do, he just speak truth. <laughs> and last night, I didn't sleep because of this one of this crucible. And I saw 2 a.m., and I said, but I have to be up by five. <laughs> and as much as I cried, and then I laid down and I couldn't fall asleep. And it didn't bother me that I couldn't fall asleep. All I did, I opened my, my phone and I just looked for some comforting songs and listened to them. And then I fell asleep. So we cannot hide from our crucibles. They are real and they are here to stay. Amen. You know, what she's yeah. saying, might as well you just make up your mind and just be ready, you know, <laughs> at any given point, because you, you you never know, like those sentiments echoed by um, Hyacinth and Jessica, that you never know when they're going to come on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, let me let me ask this question, then. Can we be can we really be ready for a crucible? That's a great question. I, I think um, we, we know that they're coming. We can, we expect, it's like death. Someone is sick. The doctor says there is no cure for the illness. So we expect the individual then to die. Yet when they do die, it's still, oh my gosh. So like crucibles, you know, they're coming, but it is when it comes, you don't know what form it's coming in. So when it comes, it does impact you. Jackie, you had a question or a comment? Well, um, Pastor and Hyacinth kind of cover what I wanted to say, but that uh, when I saw the topic crucible um, and that it, it is, it has, it, crucible is not a getaway. There's no getaway from crucibles in, in the Christian life. And Pastor just asked the question that if we can ever be prepared for it. I don't know that there's any preparation because we don't know what the crucible is. So mm -hmm. the only preparation is that there is strength, oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Name of the Amen. 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 And as we go through the lesson, that will 
will be even more evident. You had something, Claudia? Yes. I just like to go back to crucible, right? Mm -hmm. Crucible is a severe test. It's also, it can also be a place or a situation that may cause a change in a person or their character. But it's not all crucibles are the same or from the same source. Mm -hmm. So here are some sources. Crucibles of the Christian is 1 Peter 4, 12 to 19, as we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Crucibles of Satan, 1 Peter 5, 11, 8 to 11. Crucible of sin, Romans mm -hmm. 1, 18 to 32. And crucible of salvation is Jeremiah 9, 7 to 16. And there's also a crucible for protection in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. So we can read each of these and look at the different types and sources of all right. And as we get into the lesson, we'll bring those points out again. Um, for, those of, for those of you who may be um, watching online and asking, what are these people talking about? Where is their source? What, what are they referencing? This is our quarterly for um, this quarter. We call it a quarterly. It is listed as Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide, and you can you can just find this online. You could Google it, you could um, download it, and it is something that changes every quarter. Okay, and each week comes with its own lesson. So definitely. So, so hold on. What, so next week, those of you viewing, you can just download it. Um, SDA Sabbath School. The adult we'll be version. on lesson three next week, and we will be on lesson three, and you can just join us right here. Um, next Sabbath, uh, 10 30 a.m., while we study the quarter. Now, Mr. Red, this is yeah. what Spirit of Prophecy has to say. It says our wrong traits of character are not always visible to ourselves, although they may be very apparent to others. I'm stopping right there. <laughs> okay. Okay. But you know what's interesting, right? The right is that while while what Claudia read uh, in terms of the kind of crucible, you know that's just scratching the surface, right? Yeah, you yeah. do know, mm -hmm. right? I just thought mm -hmm. I'd throw that in there. Right. <laughs> that's why I said as we go through the lesson, we will be seeing more. Um, we will have an opportunity to elaborate a little more, and I'm sure Claudia have more that she wants to add to that as well because she was just giving an outline. But let me, let me read the memory text for this week, which is 1 Peter 4, verses 12 and 13. And it says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you. I'll come back to those words. As though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Now, when he says, which is to try you, my thought went to, how does that relate to what a lot of churches or a lot of Christians are saying now in terms of the prosperity gospel? Because that's what you hear a lot about. You serve God and he'll give you X, Y, Z. I don't hear anything about trials. I don't hear anything about suffering. So when you read what, what Peter is saying, what Paul is saying, what, how do you figure that? Anybody have the answer? Mm -hmm. Do not think it is strange. The fiery mm -hmm. trial, which is to try you. Try you. Not which might, not which you mm -hmm. might encounter. You're driving along the pathway and you might encounter traffic. You might encounter a deer running across the street. It's not what he's saying. There is a certainty. Right? So it, the, the introduction mentions the um the chemistry lab and for those of us who have had the the, the joy or the um, challenge <laughs> the 
thank you, Master. <laughs> or the crucible of having to do chemistry. Thank you. Crucible. crucible. <laughs> it says that, you know, oftentimes it, you place various materials into a small container, right? The Bunsen burner. Mm -hmm. And you apply extreme temperature. The container becomes more hotter and hotter. And the material either melts, frizzle, fizzle, spit, or burn brightly, depending upon what it is made of. The container is the crucible. That's us, right? A crucible is defined in the dictionary as a vessel used for melting a substance that requires a high degree of heat, a severe test, or a place or a situation in which concentrated forces interact to cause or influence change or development. Hmm. Hmm. Those two <clears throat> words are very critical, those last two. Mm -hmm. Change or development, we need to look at that. Hmm. Yep, um, these, hang on a second, Hyacinth. These definition also gives us a helpful insight into what happens in our spiritual life. This week, we'll highlight some reasons we may suddenly find ourselves under pressure and experiencing tests in places and in which circumstances cause us to change, develop, and grow in character. This will help to give us an awareness of what God is doing in our lives so that when we enter a crucible, we will have an idea of how to respond. Hmm. I'm changing my question. <laughs> now, um, sometimes, sometimes we're going through crucibles or people are going through crucibles and we interfere. We help. Uh-oh. Mm -mm. No. How do we know when to help and when to stay back on our knees and pray? Wow. Let's say, let's say a lot of college students enter into a debt, not because of their student loan, because they're leaving home for the first time. They could be 17, 18 years old, or sometimes even a little older. They're given a credit card to use with discretion. And as they're studying online, they see, you know, how you get all these things flashing across your screen. Ooh, that looks good. And they purchase and they purchase and a lot of them incur debt as a result of that. Do we as parents jump in and bail them out with those debts? Oh boy. Mr. Just, question, just a question out there or do we Mr. allow them to <laughs> learn to pay and to control their spending habits? Just a thought. Mm. Could, I, could I elaborate on that? You know what? Sure. This, this lesson is coming right into my thoughts, into my house, because what you just spoke about there, that credit card, um, I have a granddaughter that is going to college and all of a sudden she's a different human being and I'm wondering, who is she? I'm always, maybe the Lord is teaching me a lesson that this pride of my life, Kayla, no, she cannot be your pride of your life. I am the pride of your life. And I, it's just this morning, I got a call that what came in the mail for Kayla was a credit card. Uh -oh. I said to the mother, do not, do not give it to her. Don't because that's the first fall that she's going to have. Sorry to, to be so bold, sorry. That's okay, that's okay. Let me no, apologize uh, for sharing something that may help someone else. Yeah, um, so, so it says there in the paragraph, the concentrated forces interact to cause or influence change or development. Now that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, when I think of change, uh, it, it, some of you and most of us have, you have driven to places before when you put the, uh, the directions in the GPS. Um, and sometimes because of traffic scenarios or maybe accidents or what have you, it just 
in the middle of it while you're going to your destination, it goes uh, rerouting, rerouting. Yeah. And sometimes because you know the route, you know, you know that particular route. So you're wrestling with the GPS. And sometimes you insist, even though it says to reroute, to turn around, make a U-turn, because you think you know, you just continue going the same direction. Is it me only? Or I know someone out there has been you got a witness. You got a witness. And, and so yeah. it's the same thing here, right? So this crucible now comes and we might be heading in that direction. We might be going that way. And God comes with this crucible and he just reroutes the whole thing and changes not only our directions, the crucible also comes to change our desires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So directions mm -hmm. and desires were the, the two most prominent ones that came to mind when I think of change. When I thought of development, I mainly look at development of character, but change is what the human the human family struggles with because truth be told, we like to hold on to things, mm -hmm. whether it's your your um, your own ideologies, your own um, culture, your presuppositions, when you know your own ideas when you open the word of God. We don't we are not so open to change. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes the crucible comes and God has to change our thought process desires directions what else can he change to get us back like a train on a track mm -hmm. and i noted also great points pastor it's, it's the challenges that make us into who god intends us to be you know the story um i read the story once of a man that was sitting it was late evening and as he sat to read the light was on and a moth, he noticed the moth, um, there was a cocoon. The moth was in the, struggling to get out of the cocoon. So one, one um, wing came out and the cocoon, he stopped reading to look at the process. And as he sat there looking, he saw the, um, the moth struggling to get out. And he struggled and he took a little scissor and he clipped it. He clipped the cocoon where the other wing, because the other wing was stuck. And he clipped that um, cocoon to free the moth. In freeing the moth though, he realized that the moth wasn't flying as he thought it should. Instead, the wing that he clipped from the cocoon was now limp. What he didn't realize was that the moth had to struggle to get the fluid out of the wing so that as he fluttered, it was actually serving a purpose. So what appeared to be suffering was actually fulfilling a purpose in the life of the moth. By intervening, what he did was to actually cripple the moth because it could no longer fly. Because that wing that he freed, he actually paralyzed. Amen. A lot of times when we're going through our crucibles and folks interject in or, or intercept or do whatever they think they're doing to help us, mm -hmm. they're really not helping because God is allowing the crucibles Crucible. to make us into who he intends us to be. If we were all honest with ourselves and we take a, retro, a retrospective glance at our lives, mm, and sometimes the Holy Spirit moves the curtain a little bit, so we reflect, we will realize the person we are today Hi, good. <laughs> the person we are portraying ourselves to be today wouldn't have been if we had not gone through the crucibles in our lives. <laughs> so I say all this to say, be very careful how we step into God's plan 
in other people's lives. Great point. All right. So great Amen. point. What, let's answer the question at the end of uh, the introduction there. The word. Go ahead. What are the causes of the difficult times that we experience through our lives? What are the causes of the difficult times that we experience through our lives? Very hmm. important question. Sure. Sometimes, um, sometimes um, uh, the consequences are as a result of the things we do. Mm -hmm. Because for instance, um, let, let's take the health aspect of our lives. If, if we do not, eat a certain way and live a certain way, then we can come down with certain illnesses. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, this is bringing out causes and effects. It is saying that if you stand in a hot sun with a ice cream, well, it's going to melt. Mm -hmm. So if you do not do the things that are right, then you are going to suffer <clears throat> the consequences. So sometimes the causes are as a result of the way we live, and as a result of the things we do, those are some of the causes. Amen. And sometimes we are put through a test. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not what we did or we didn't do, but Joe. sometimes it's yeah. a test for our <coughs> growth and development like you just explained with the butterfly. Sometimes it's a test mm -hmm. for our growth and our advancement in our Christian walk with God, like in the case of Job. Mm -hmm. He didn't do right. anything wrong, but he was put through a test. Right. And also, Jessica mentioned uh, a great point there. The scriptural reference to what she mentioned would be John 9. And that would be for the glory of God. Remember, you, you mm -hmm. do recall the story of the blind man, right? He said it wasn't anything that he did or yeah. his parents did. This happened God. for the mm -hmm. glory of God. Amen. But then there are other times in which we rebel against God. Mm -hmm. And as a result of our rebellion, the consequences come. Right? And then there are mm -hmm. other times where the sin in our lives leave, um, we experience the consequences because of the sin that we uh, either do not repent of or we persist in or we reject the Holy Spirit when he calls us to repent. And so the consequences come as a result. Mm -hmm. Looking at it from yeah. another perspective, we live in a time, in a world of good and evil, dispute between good and evil, between God and Satan. Therefore, um, we really shouldn't be surprised if we face trouble when we stand for, on God's side. As mm -hmm. Christians following Christ, comes with difficulties, right? Um, remaining faithful when sin attacks, um, just testifying about the goodness of God, you know. Um, when we do these things, um, the enemy tries to silence us. And this experience um, can be considered a crucible. So that's just from a different perspective. Amen. Right. And let me, let me touch one more perspective quickly. Um, I, I'm glad that Sister Philip had mentioned Job, likewise the red. Um, sometimes causes comes the difficulties that we experience, not necessarily um, because it's a, it's a test as we see with Job. But if we look at Job a little closer, it could also be, well, put it differently from saying a test, it could also be that God just wants to brag on you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It could just be that, listen, God says, I know the red. I know Jess. I know Hyacinth. I know Andre. Right? So, and, and I can say confidently because I know them and Satan has desired to sift them. I know they will not betray secret trust. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a test, but in the, in, on the other side of it, it's God bragging on you. He's saying, listen, I know my child. They're not going to betray secret trust. Mm -hmm. I know what they're capable of. And I know because I know that they love me. I'm allowing it to happen just to prove that they love me. Amen. All right. So sometimes it, it, it's <clears throat> God just bragging on us. Sometimes it's a test. It could be rebellion. It could be sin. It could be for the glory of God. We never know. We just got have to be open 
and um, ask the Lord to guide us in the process so that we maintain our sanity while we're going mm-hmm. through the mm-hmm. And um, a Sunday's lesson pointed out that Peter is urging his readers not to fall into the trap of believing that fiery ordeals and trials are alien to the Christian experience. Uh Rather, they are to be considered normal. They can and should be expected. Um, I think earlier on, sorry. Go ahead, Ayasin. Someone had said about disobedience is a big part of some of the crucibles crucibles we are going through that I think if we were more obedient, especially when we were younger, we wouldn't really go through them, especially um, being obedient to our parents. And I'm saying this to whoever may be listening. It's one of the worst things as human beings we could be do because it's in the commandments, obey your parents. And um, we do it anyway. And I see we are now complaining about our children. And we did the same thing. So the world is is the way it is because of disobedience. And it started in heaven. Mm. I could Mm -hmm. give my own story, but this is not the place. (laughs) All right. Um, earlier on, I have to make a correction on my error. I think earlier on when we were doing the, the memory text, I said um, Paul, and it was actually Peter. But but you did, but but Paul is mentioned in the yeah. and I heard it, but Paul is also mentioned in the next lesson, so both of them spoke. So it, yeah. Right. Yeah, they both said it, but in the context that I was reading the, the memory text. Crucibles of Satan. What could those be? um, 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, what would you do if you saw a roaring lion coming towards you? I'd freeze. You would freeze? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's the human part <laughs> fight or flight yes. fight or flight so what would happen? I don't know what would happen but I would know that there is a sign I would know that <laughs> can I share so mm-hmm. our neighbor have two great cats uh oh yeah uh. Athena and I am not sure who else but I think we're bold enough to, to admit Cats just petrify me. It doesn't matter the size. It doesn't matter the color. Seriously? Yes. I have a fear of cats. So every time I see the gray cat, I'm like, oh, my Lord. And Athena can see them a mile away. And they have a habit of sitting under your car. So imagine now I'm going to the car and this cat is there. So every time I see that cat, it's like, the fear factor comes out. Then the cat comes out one evening and Claudia is there and the c- Claudia is going, oh, kitty, 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 kitty. And the cat just crawls up to her. She pets the cat and the cat just rolls over. And I'm like, <laughs> seriously? So before long, I see Athena, first with one finger, <laughs> Then the cat crawls up to her and she's now petting the cat. So I'm the only one left with my fear. (laughs) That's what comes to my mind when I hear now the roaring lion. And I brought out all these analogies because some of us know the enemies there and we're scared. Some know the enemies there and they pet, right? We know We know cats aren't typically dangerous. So them petting the cat is fine. But we know lions are dangerous. But yet in the zoo, the zookeepers pet them, oftentimes to their detriment. I don't think the, I know, not that I don't think, the Bible has never brought out Satan as anyone that's good. 
right? There are various names given to him. And they're warning us, be sober, be vigilant. That to me is like, you're sending soldiers to war. Don't go there sleeping. Stand with your gun ready to go. Put on the full armor. Don't let your guard down. Always be on the lookout. Even when you see, be, you know, when it's, when it's the, the enemy seem like they're friendly, don't let your guard down and think they are your friends. Even when they're coming saying, I'm defecting, I'm coming over to your side, don't believe them. Yeah, be wise. This is what comes to my mind when I think of the crucibles of Satan. It's nothing good. But as we read, and if you haven't yet read this book, World Crisis, I beg you to start reading it. Read it up. Amen. I beg you start reading that book because that book will open your eyes to the evil and, and, and the wickedness of the intent of the enemy. So when we go against the word of God, no matter how great it seems on the outside, there is a pit waiting for you to fall in. If it goes contrary to the word of God, no matter how beautiful that woman looks, men, and she's not a Christian, don't go there. Don't think that you're going to convert her. No matter how handsome, no matter how Hallelujah. And charismatic that man is, ladies, if he's not covenant. a covenant man in the word of God, and you're a Seventh-day Adventist, so I dare say if he's not a Seventh-day Adventist, don't venture. Don't venture. It doesn't always end that they accept Christ and come over. It doesn't always end that way. And there are millions of stories that if we're honest and open, we could share to the detriment, to the crucibles, to the heartaches that folks have gone through. Yes. The oh. devil is not our friend. He's oh. a foe. He wants yes. nothing good for us. This is what I came across, uh, Mr. Etro, and the class when we were studying, I was studying. And it's in, in, in the book of Job chapter one, starting at verse seven, and it reads, and the Lord, um, no, chapter verse six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, doth Job fear God for naught? So I, um, it's a long reading, but mm -hmm. I'm, what, what caught my eyes was that when you present yourself before God in whatever you're doing. You go to church, you're in your house, whatever you're doing, Satan is there. Mm -hmm. He appears. And that is so frightening that you always have to be on your guard. And he's not the, he's not the ugly looking person with a pitchfork. No. Sure not. Right. Jack, you have yes. one? Yeah, I was just thinking um, that um, so the, uh, the, this point is the Satan that people think he is, this guy's a dapper guy. So he's not going to be give, um, giving any, any, any gifts that looks any, what we would say in Jamaica, any pion pion way, you know? It, 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 it has to be something, it's a nice passage. Something to attract It's you. attractive. Mm -hmm. And that's how Satan presents himself. And, and, and that's why um, each time I think about the devil, and with all of us, but with our children, how much more we have to really 
pray hard for them because they see all these things that are so beautiful. Everything is good. Everything is nice. But they don't understand the, 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 the kind of person that they're dealing with. That as he gives his packages out, they're mm -hmm. beautifully wrapped, but it is laced with poison inside. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's interesting all the, the comments that are coming out, right? But let's look back at the text. It says, be sober, which means then what God is, what the word is really saying it, um, to us is that most individuals are drunk. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the question then becomes, what causes one to be drunk? The wine of Mm -hmm. The wine of Babylon, Babylon. Mean, the wine of Babylon, the, the, the false doctrine, which has given the world the, 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 the false mm -hmm. Sabbath, which is uh, the false Sabbath Sunday, mm -hmm. to the seventh day, uh, Saturday, the Sabbath day. But even more so, what about when we don't practice the health message? Because for one to be sober, we have to be cognizant of what's happening around us. We have to be alert right because when we think about it a man that's at the bar who has had so many shots of, of white rum and and red bull and and beers and all these things he can't walk straight to go home if he's drunk so in our christian walk if we're not sober we're just like this drunken man he's walking and staggering but can't discern the dangers around him mm -hmm. and so likewise we must ask ourselves, what can possibly keep mm -hmm. us from not being sober and alert to the, mm -hmm. the enemy? Because you remember, he's subtlety. He's subtle. He comes in mask, right? Portrayed as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Right? So we must be mindful of um, what may cause us not to be sober. Amen. Amen. So, so far, we'll, we've looked at the causes of crucibles, the fact that Satan has his crucibles that he pours out on us. He's a roaring lion. The crucibles of sin, right? And oftentimes, um, it says, Paul describes the process when people fall into sin and the consequences of those sin, you know? So, our our bent to have our own way sometimes, despite what the word of God says, it's our experiences that leads us into sin. And God doesn't always save us from the consequences of our choices. We know he's there with us, but he's not going to jump in and take you out. Every time you, you know, you sin, he jumps in and he saves you. We sometimes live the rest of our lives with the consequences of those sins, the choices that we make. The lesson points out that many times he allows us to experience the consequences of our actions in order for us to understand how deeply and damaging and offensive sin is. We have been, um, if we abuse our bodies by failing to eat healthy, as Sister um, Philippa pointed out, or to exercise, or if we regularly overwork, Stop talking about me. This also is no sin comment. against God. No comment. Yeah, I underline it in, in for I did me. Too. I did too. For me. Yeah. But and when this, we get when we go there, we have to do something about it, not just underline it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I have and this has consequences that create the conditions of a crucible. I, I read for self-application. So I, I see me in, in, when I am doing my lesson, I see me. I see where God is talking to me and I, you know, I make the, I have to reach out and I hope and pray that every one of us, when we are studying, because sometimes we have the tendency to say, oh, those Israelites, mm -hmm. not realizing the Israelites in us, you know, and that it is applicable to us today. I am thankful, though, that crucibles don't just come to crush us. It comes to purify us, you know. And when this lesson um, points that out, 
that God wants to purify us, to set us apart for his work and for his glory. So when we're going through those trials and, mm -hmm. and tribulations, don't always be saying, oh, woe is me for I am undone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we can be saying, Lord, thank you for seeing worth in me that you're putting me through these trials. And when we change our mindset, because I find sometimes instead of looking for the positives in things, we spend our days complaining. Why am I doing? And why is this going? Why is this happening? Versus looking to say, you know what, God, all things work together for good. You know, we often don't see that. But when we think of, when we think of parenting or being a parent and um, hmm, our children are going through, or we, you know, we, we, we live in an era, I think, where no, no child gets punished anymore. I don't think so. But growing up, you did something wrong and you got punished. And oftentimes the punishment, I didn't know of timeouts back then growing up. <laughs> You know, you got him out of the sun, <laughs> you know, out of the rain, but it was a time out be because you did something wrong. Yeah. Hello. Hello. So our parents, our parents wasn't giving, you know, you, you, listen, folks. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got the rod of correction and it didn't kill us. But it's a different era, and, and I fully understand that. And the Lord, when he, when he allows crucibles, as the Spirit of God brings to mind a word of the Lord that hurts you, you can be sure, if the Spirit of the Lord, I'm sorry, brings to your mind a word of the Lord that hurts you, you can be sure that there is something in you that he wants to hurt to the point of its death. So when we sometimes are going through things and, and God is at the parent that is there allowing us to go through it. He's right there with us. He was in the fiery furnace with the three Hebrew boys. He was in the lion's den with Daniel. So whatever it is we're going through, he is in it with us. And it's like as, as parents, sometimes when you have to punish your child and you see them going through it, you're allowing them to, but you're there with them. They can't sleep because of choices they make. You're with, with them. I remember my youngest brother is an asthmatic. And as a child, he wouldn't stop playing in the dust. And he's allergic to dust because we figured that triggered an asthmatic attack. And no matter how many times my mom said, come out of the dust, stop playing in the dirt. He was out there. And come nights, he couldn't breathe. And my mother, and don't think she was cruel, the, the treatment was given, but at the same time, he we couldn't breathe for him. He had to go, even though he's getting treatment, he still was the one suffering the consequences of playing in the dust. You know, mm -hmm. so we stayed up with him while he, we, we tried all the methods there is to get him to, to you know, go through that period, but he had to live. We could not breathe for him. I couldn't say, okay, now breathe now. My lungs are clear, it will clear yours. No, he, what, he suffered the consequences of those actions. And so it is sometimes with us, we make the choices. And the last paragraph in Wednesday says, God's refining and testing involves drastic action. There are perhaps three reasons why refining and testing may feel like a crucible. First, we experience pain as God allows circumstances to bring our sins to our attention. Sometimes the sin could be you get arrested, you know, and you serve jail time. A, a, a little earlier, Jeremiah unhappily writes, the billows blow fiercely to burn away the um, the lead with fire, but the refining goes on in vain. The wicked are not purged out. Thus, sometimes drastic action, drastic action is needed in order to get our attention. Second, 
we experience anguish as we feel sorry for the sin we now see clearly. Ouch. Third, we experience frustration as we try to live differently. It can be quite uncomfortable and difficult to keep choosing to give up the things that have been so much a part of, our, of us. So crucibles of maturity. Paul says, take pleasure in the crucibles that you're going through. Nebuchadnezzar, when Nebuchadnezzar um, did what he did, how many years was he out there eating grass? Mm. Seven years. And what, what happened after, his, after he was restored to his senses? He praised the God of heaven. Mm. So sometimes we have to go through, it talks that the lesson talks about pruning. When you're pruning and you're cutting away what seemed to be most of the tree, you're doing so for what is left to really be healthy and live healthful life. So, and, and, and bear fruit. So we go through the pruning. Our crucibles allow us to be mature Christians if we allow God to work in and through us. Notice Paul, none of the disciples, you know, they all endure suffering. None had it easy. Paul said he had a thorn. And he said it was to keep him from becoming conceited or proud. Do we have thorns in our flesh that God is using to keep us humble and focused on him? Mm. Are we going through the things in our lives? Because as Hyacinth said, her pride or, or, or joy and her pride was moved away from what she now recognizes it should have been. Does God allow the people in our lives to disappoint us sometimes because we have so much faith and confidence in him, in them? And the Bible says the arm of flesh will fail you. Hmm. So sometimes we put all our faith and confidence, it's like all the money in one bank, in one investment, and then it crashes and we lose, we lose, everything. lose everything. God is saying, I should be your focus, your main focus. I should be your pride and joy. I should be where you, your primary, your, your attention lies. So if it's anything other than that, the crucible may come to, to prune us and to change our perspective and our attention. But he, he, he made a, a, a great point, Derek. So yes, crucible, cru, crucibles will come. Then the question, um, what do we do when we are in a crucible? How do we get out of it? How do we maintain our sanity in the crucible? Uh, okay. mm -hmm. Go ahead, Hassan. Right. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just listening to you. Yeah. Um, so one, um, two strategies were given here. Um, and I think that's, said one, be joyful. Mm -hmm. Now, let's be honest. When you are having a rough day, when things are not going the way you anticipated, um, when was the last time when you had a bad day, you looked at yourself and you began to sing and to be joyful and to just celebrate, hey, I'm having a bad day. Did you post that on Twitter? Hey, cheer with me. I'm having a bad day. Who does that? Has anyone done that lately? So, I? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so, so in a sense, there when we're in this crucible it, it, it it's a call for deeper reflection right um james once said count it all joy when we fall in he said count it all joy now peter said rejoice mm -hmm. but then he also said watch on the prayer and praise god when you're in these circumstances so those are the two avenues to um, not to get us out of the, the crucible, but to give us some kind of um, um, emotional or mental stability or so that our stress level don't go up so high and we need some cortisol or something to that effect. But to know that God is with you in the, in the trial, in the crucible, and as Paul puts it in Romans 8, the suffering that we encounter now are not worthy compare to the glory that will be revealed in us so at the end of the day no matter how we look at it it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when 
And when that do come, God has provided a way of escape for us in terms of helping us to better bear the, the crucibles that he has allowed to come into our lives. And also he has um, given us the tools to help us to grow in the trials. And if we allow him to the red and look forward to what we will become, more so what we are becoming and where we are going, what our destination is, then I think the crucibles will not be such, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? The red help of reach out this morning. All right. huh? <laughs> the unbearable? The, 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 uh, uh, I like that. The crucibles will not be so much unbearable, but Jess will, will continue to smile and maintain that youthful look. And people will continue to say she's a teenager because in the crucible, she was rejoicing. She was celebrated. Come on now. Right. There you go, John. Right. So it's a, it's a matter of perspective. That's all the preacher's trying to say. Okay. Could I just add one thing quickly? Sure. We are talking as Christians with crucibles. What about the person and persons? who are going through crucibles, but they have no idea what it means or what it is. So instead of they fight with themselves about it and their lives are totally miserable. What about those people? I think this song will, the words of this song will answer your question because I too, I remember in our, in our um, session last week with pastor, he raised a question similar to that. Here's a word to a song. I know it has, it's um, become Jackie's favorite and one of my favorite too. Here are the words. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed light, life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Ah. Oh, he chases me down fight still I'm found, leaves the 99, and I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless, reckless love. love of God. But reckless. also, That's but also remember, Miss Barnes, that um, God's no respecter of persons. Yes, the Christian may have a deeper insight into the character of God and understand the trials that we are called to bear. Um, however, God's intention is to bring salvation to all of humanity. John 3, 16 makes that clear that Jesus' death on the cross is for the, the entire world. So God meets every individual where they are. So the, the person that may not have the knowledge as you and I have about the character of God, yet still God comes down to where they are. So in their crucible, he still provides grace. He still Amen. supplies mercy. He still provides them with an opportunity to recognize his love, to recognize his grace, and mm -hmm. to see how he intends to work in and through their lives so that he can draw them. Because it's God's desire that none perish, but that what? All oh, um, to eternal life. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, Coming after me. Thank There's you. no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. Mm. Uh, what a God. Like what a God. That song right now. <laughs> yes. I wish I knew the word, I wish I knew the tune well enough to sing it, but I don't. Uh, work on it. <laughs> I will. Yeah, the Lord is good. Okay. All the time. Thank Amen. you so much for sharing. I appreciate all of you. Thank you, Sister Dorothy, for coming out. And thanks to everyone again for participating in Sabbath School. This was an awesome morning. Yeah. And I'm sure that after all that we've gone through in the Sabbath School lesson, that we will be leaving Sabbath School saying, hey, there's no crucible with God that I cannot go through because he will take me. He will take you right through. Just want to remind you of the words of this poem. That just goes so well with going through our crucibles. It says, don't quit. 
When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you have trod seems so uphill, when the funds are low and the depths are high, and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Amen. Life is queer with its twists and turns as every one of us sometimes learns, and many a failure turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up. Though the pace seems slow, you might succeed with another blow. Often the struggler has given up when he might capture the victor's cup, and he learned too late when the night slipped down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt, and you never can tell how close you are. It may be nearer when it seems afar. So stick to the fight. When your hardest hit, it's when things seems worse that you must not quit. Amen. 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 God is in it with us, brothers and sisters. So as we accept the call to go, remember the crucibles, they're no surprise. They're there. But beyond the open door, there's a fresh and new anointing awaiting all of us. God bless you. Goodbye from Sabbath School until next Sabbath. In the things familiar, we find security. Resisting all the changes the days and years can bring. When God decides to lead you through an open door, inviting you to walk in realms you never known before. Yeah.
like to learn to play worship. Amen. Amen. Awesome. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah.